My message to you is literally, you don't know me, so why would you hate me? Hello, what's the crack? What's the story? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're doing something a bit crazy. We're checking out the KKK. It's history and lasting legacy. So literally, I'm a, I'm a kind of person, like, I love to learn. I love to learn, because you never know where you're going to learn. Do you know what I mean? I feel like when it comes to this group, I never really... Like, it's been something that's been fearful. Whenever I see the name or I see the clue, it's all... I always get this fear, like, oh my God. I just picture someone, you know, getting burnt on a tree or something like that. So it'd be good to see, you know, it's history, what happened, you know, back in the day. You know, just how it started. I say, you know what, let me check this out. Let's go. The Q Tux Clan. The Clan march may have been cut short, but apparently it helped membership. Well, Other than the Coke bottle. What's more recognizable than oh. the white hood and robe and the flaming cross? The government was intended to be of the white man, by the white man, and for the white man. Mongrel fashion people! Interest in the Ku Klux Klan has swelled and then dwindled. The Klan's power always came and went in phases. Until at one point, the tactics used to gather Klan members together ultimately become the hooks used to drag them down. The oldest Ku Klux Klan organization in the nation may be out of business. But what's never gone away is the fear the Klan built its legacy on. Preserve the racist! Fear that's still here today. Let's go! They call themselves White Patriots. Knights of the Klan, and they have returned to the small Tennessee town where it all began. This is Pulaski, Tennessee, and the Ku Klux Klan began back in 1865 on Christmas Eve, when six ex-Confederate soldiers met to form a social club. Its name was inspired by the Greek word for circle. Nathan Bedford Forrest was the Klan's first imperial wizard, and the hoods and robes were used to frighten black people in their homes. But then black people start voting, and the Klan and groups like it turn brutal. But the Klan went quiet just years later. By 1872, all of their goals had been pretty much accomplished, so it wasn't really a need to don a sheet anymore. Because you had your person, your guy at the state house who could make laws that would suit your... That's mad, you know, is the fact that you had all these... You had a few racists, literally, in government. So no matter what you do, you could vote. It doesn't make any difference. It's so, it's sad. It's just sad that all that happened, you know. And I feel like, this is my opinion. It's my opinion when it comes to all this. I feel like most people in these groups, they're probably just not exposed. Like, I feel like it's, just, it's all about education. It's all about, you know, learning as to, letting, learning people's history, because it's just a fear of the unknown in my opinion you know it's just a fear of you know what could happen you know because you're fearing something that it's not gonna do anything to you like if you grew up in a little town where you know it's majority white and you you hardly see any black person and the only time you see black people it's only you know when you watch tv and then all your life you've been told all this stuff that yeah these people they're gonna take over that you know you're gonna be obviously radicalized obviously but the more you know, the more you read books, the more you watch movies, the more you socialize with different people, different ethnicities, different from different countries. You start learning. We're all the same at the end of the day. We all think the same, even though we might think we don't. We all think the same. And there's no weak a race. It's just we're all the exact same. In my opinion, anyway, that's what I think. Some people might disagree. Who knows? But yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think so far. Thank you. I'm really enjoying this. Your purposes. In 1915, Birth of a Nation became the first film ever screened at the White House. The book it was based on was written by a friend of then-President Woodrow Wilson. You know, it's a three-hour film that poses black men as, as dangerous and violent, so which Whoa. led to, you know, a decade of racial terror lynchings. Whoa. And we see that that narrative continues to this very day. The film inspired another war veteran, William J. Simmons, who began to reignite the flames of the Klan, this time against not just blacks, but Catholics, Jewish people, and the nation's newly arriving immigrants. People are shocked to know that there were, you know, a million people in the Ku Klux Klan around the country. 
The Ku Klux Klan spread its poisonous influence. But you had a lot of people, I mean, a lot of officials. You had governors, you had senators. Wow. But by the 1930s, the Klan's millions had dwindled to thousands. Here's why. As the New Jersey Ku Klux Klan rents the camp for one day, cameramen are not permitted to photograph everything. While the Klan had a national organization, there were copycat groups who fought over funds, dragging each other into court and adding to the growing disgust of the public. The IRS investigated in 1944 and then demanded $500,000 in back taxes. Well. That crippled the Klan, but not for long. With the advent of the Civil Rights Movement and the Supreme Court order to desegregate in 1954, the Ku Klux Klan sprang back to life. Robert Shelton's United Clans of America assaulted freedom riders and activists from Birmingham to Anniston. The White Knights of Mississippi were responsible for them. It's crazy when they say Birmingham, because I live in Birmingham, but I live in Birmingham in the UK. But when they say Birmingham, they're talking about obviously Birmingham, Alabama. I just find a way, sorry. As an activist from Birmingham to Anniston, the White Knights of Mississippi were responsible for the murder of three civil rights workers. The wow. Klan is responsible for the 1963 Baptist church bombing and the 1965 murder of mother of five, Viola Liuzzo. The FBI infiltrated and cracked down on the violence, but violence wasn't the only issue. You also have those nonviolent actions that were carried out by groups like the White Citizens Council after Brown v. Board in places like Montgomery, Alabama, where I am, they immediately started these private um, academies. And, and to this day, they don't send their kids to school with black kids. Wow. Wow. Uh, I believe in nonviolence. I think that we should react and we should work and organize as white people. David uh, Duke people. tried to popularize a new type of Klansman. He tried to claim they were nonviolent. They were simply all about white people's rights. And he was photogenic and he got a lot of publicity and his Klan group started growing. And then comes leaders like Bill Wilkinson and Fraser Glenn Miller Jr. The numbers were smaller than before, but the violence still left people dead. To investigate and go after the Klan, Klan Watch director Randall Williams attended several rallies. There is an odd, uh, happy white supremacy family atmosphere to some of this activity. You know, if you go to a, a Klan rally on a Saturday afternoon, they're having a fish fry. I mean, mm. it almost looks benign. I feel like, again, I always use the word sad because this is sad. Uh, the saddest thing about all of this is the fact that it's the kids, the innocent kids. These guys, you know, guys and girls are growing up with this way of thinking. Like, they don't, they don't, they don't wish, most of them don't wish to learn about this, but they're being forced. Like, we, as, as kids, we look up to our parents, our dad, our moms, uncles, aunts. And if every day you wake up, you, you know, your dad is, you know, is telling you how bad black people are, that, 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 that stays in your head. Because I'm sure there's some things that my parents told me when I was younger that subconsciously I've for, I forgotten about, but I still think like that. Because I was a kid when they told me, and because I believed them, I look up to them. And that's, that's what's happening. That's what's happening you know, back then, probably till today, you know, behind closed doors, you know, all this thinking being forced onto kids. It's, again, sad. But the KKK's symbols made their members a solid target. And memberships, reams of propaganda material, assets and bank accounts became liabilities that groups like the SBLC could use to take the Klan down in court. In 1987, Beulah Mae Donald won a $7 million lawsuit against the United Clans of America wow. for their involvement in the death of her 19-year-old son. No, I didn't want it to happen wow. to nobody else's child like it has mine. It bankrupted the largest Klan organization at the time. But the people who'd been attracted to KKK principles had already started to move on. Beginning in the late 1970s, what we really see is that this sense of emergency shared by white power activists. And, and it's the fact that these are grown ups, these are grown men and women dressing in. Like, do you not have a life? You know, I don't, again, I don't like to, you know, abuse people, whoever, but if your belief is hating someone that you don't know, okay, now, okay, let's picture this. I'm part, I'm part of them. And each black person I see, I feel like, you know, I'm better than them. You don't know this person and automatically you hate them. 
I might want going crazy here. I don't know you, but when I see you, I'm being taught to just automatically hate you. That's been the most saddest thing ever, literally. Here I'm talking about Klansmen, but also radical tax resistors, white separatists, followers of Christian identity, neo-Nazis, and a whole bunch of other people. That sense of emergency and the sense of a shared frustration with the government brought people together in what they called the white power movement. White power! The KKK's robes and crosses are less popular now, but the tactics the Klan used to draw individuals in proved useful for decades. One key lesson, the Klan figured out how to use the internet back in the early 80s with Liberty Net. The new white power groups now know how to communicate without making themselves easy targets. We have to remember that these activists are motivated by a sense that their actions are all that stands between them and their... That was the guy that killed, I think that's the guy that killed a lot of black people in some shopping centre, isn't it? Yeah, I think I saw the video. Oh my God, it was so sad, man. Like, well, again, this is another kid that, you know, that's just what he's believed in since he was young. And the, the saddest thing is going to be like, he's going to go to prison. He's going to be ar around black people. And then he might start thinking, okay, this is another black people that I've learned about, you know, that are meant to be worse than me. They're meant to be... And then, you know, over the years, you might not even say, over the years, you might start thinking, why did I do that? But what's been done is done. And he's going to, he has to face the music. By a sense that their actions are all that stands between them, their families, and the end of the world. They see racial demographic change as the end of the world, wow. as an annihilation of everything Ooh, that they care about. For them, it's a state of emergency. Wow. I like that. I was I like them kind of short, quick documentaries. Because if it's like over 30 minutes, I'll get bored. I have, I have a short attention span. But yeah, I like videos like this. It's so good. Because I learned a few stuff that I started back in the, was it 18, 1850? 1850, yeah. And it was by some, and then they got the word Ku Klux from, it's a Greek word, all that kind of stuff. About the black lady that won 7 or 8 million after a kid was killed. You learn so much stuff that it's still going on today. And I feel like it's definitely the internet, you know, that, you know, makes this thing grow. I know somewhere out there, someone is watching this right now. And they might not agree with people that look like me. You know? And my message to you is literally, you don't know me. So why would you hate me? You know, check out my other stuff. You never know. You might like my other stuff. You know, you might be a subscriber. You know, I've, I've got zero eight in my body. You know, I love everyone. I've met the most lovely people from different countries, ethnicities. You never know what you're going to meet in life. So just be nice. Be nice, yeah? It's one race and it's one life. I never know. You never know where you're gone. Where you're today, gone tomorrow. Like, comment, subscribe. Share it to your friends and family and your enemies. Who knows? And I'll see you guys very soon. Bye-bye.